I'm with Bill Norman from uh, LeClaire Ryan PC. They're up on the North Shore, uh, and he's a, uh, a, a lawyer. And I think Bill is going to talk today about uh, non-compete, non-competes, and how it impacts uh, business, potentially impacts business people. Good morning, Pete, Jeffrey, uh, and Steve. I'd like to say thank you for having me on. It's our pleasure it's to have you back again. I love to be on this program. It's a great program, and I like the ideas behind it. Well, you know, uh, you're bringing up a topic that it seems like everybody wants to talk about, so it must be very relevant. So why don't we get your take on this? Okay, just a little history, and uh, I know Pete's well aware of this being a brother attorney. I think you want to call him Peter, though. Peter, okay, okay. I'm sorry. sorry. I don't care. Oh, I'm He's sorry. fine. Okay. I introduced myself. As all, after all these years, I'm going to change my, calling him Pete. I thought I had to. Well, I don't want to offend anybody, and I'm terrible with names, so the fact that I remembered it was Pete or Peter is pretty well, good for me. Well, you won't forget it now. No, no, <laughs> now go home. I'll have dreams about it. That's okay, what will happen. Just don't call your wife Peter tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've called it worse, so we'll let that go for now. Okay, good. Uh, the history behind this is, as Peter knows, is that there, there was a lot of talk about this in the legislature over a year ago, and somehow it took a back seat to other things that were more pressing. And quite frankly, I was glad that it did because the legislation as proposed and Peter and I talked about this before the program started, was flawed in many different ways. Uh, and it seems that there's re a reemergence of the interest in this. And I'm picking up on an article that was in the Boston Globe. It was authored by William Brownsburg, Will Brownsberger. I don't want to call him William. Uh, he's a state senator from Belmont. And Laurie Ehrlich, who's the uh, state representative from my own hometown, Marblehead. And the essence of the article is this. Uh, they, they make four or five different points. And uh, essentially they break down to this. That large businesses unfairly impose these restrictive covenants on employees. Now when I talk about restrictive covenants, I should make it clear the article distinguishes non-competes from confidentiality or non-disclosure agreements. And its focus is primarily on non-competes. And we'll talk about its viewpoint about the non-disclosure and non-solicitation agreements in a moment. Uh, the second point they make is that a lot of the people that sign these are unsuspecting employees. So they're unaware of the import of these uh, provisions and they don't seek advice uh, from counsel or otherwise generally because they're not in a position to hire an attorney or another advisor and at the same time they're in need of a job so they, they, they even if they are aware of the provision they don't pay much attention to it because their focus is on getting employed. Uh, the second thing, the third thing I should say is that it inhibits employment and they point to California as the example of this and they use Silicon Valley as their, uh, as their representative study, if you will. But, um, and we'll talk about whether or not there's any empirical truth to what it is they, they allege in their article. And the, the, the last point they make is that there is a legitimate need for the protection of confidential information. So as I said at the outset of this discussion, they make a distinction between non-compete covenants and confidentiality covenants. And to be brief, a non-compete covenant essentially says you are not allowed to compete with me in my line of business. And there are many different ways to write this. And so the restrictions can be uh, the nature of the business, can be geographic. Uh, it usually involves a term of years and it involves customers of the business. 